absolutely 100 percent. If I have the leverage and I can get a clause in my contract that says that you can't uh, fire me without pay and all the other things, I'm going to put it in. Absolutely, especially but if he, I... he is still dickering with Michigan, right? But, so, but okay. especially though, Skip, yeah, yeah, if I can't get a head coaching okay. job, this is where things always get kind of murky. We assume that these owners want to hire him as a head coach, but he has interviewed in the past on multiple occasions yes. and walked yep. away yep. without an offer. Yep. So... This could still be the same thing. Think about it. Eric B. Enemy interviewed on all 32 teams by now. He still yeah. can't get a job. No. Nope. So just because we hold Jim Harbaugh in such high regard mm -hmm. as an NFL coach doesn't mean these owners do. He interviewed with Atlanta yesterday, I guess it was. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, he interviewed with the Chargers. Okay. If he and now I'm not keen on all the rules just yet, but I believe they can't start hiring to after the divisional round, which means they can't start interviewing people in person. So they got to go through the minority process, all this sort of stuff that has to take place. But you would think if the Chargers have him on their radar and that's their guy, he wouldn't go to Atlanta. He'd just say, I'm going to go. I like this quarterback. I like Justin Herbert. This is going to work for me. I, let me see what Michigan is talking about. Let me kind of just hold both at bay instead of going around, taking all these trips eating all these people's food, and then going back to Michigan yep. to coach the team. You would think that. So I'm not 100% sure that people want to hire him the way that we're reporting it. Just because when you get in an interview, maybe they don't like your cologne. Mm -hmm. They don't like the way you walk down the hallway. Or you know? maybe you don't like them. Or, or, mm -hmm. I was going to say that. Okay. Or maybe you don't like the facilities. Yep. The facilities aren't good. Yep. So you just never really know. But I'm glad that he is trying to protect himself because clearly it seems like the NC2A is <laughs> – Circling around Michigan in that program. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I it, it's perplexing. It's perplexing. I, I think it's a 70% chance he stays at Michigan because he's negotiating and he could be the face of college football going forward, especially now that Saban is left. Uh, the Big Ten is going to be, you know, with SC and Washington, you know, it's going to be even more competitive. A, a gym, a, a, and, and the NCAA coming down, you know, I guess that's hovering over him, but the NCAA is kind of a shell of itself. You know, people don't respect the NCAA like they used to, especially now that kids get paid. I mean, what power does the NCAA have? You know, usually once a, a team or an organization or a university kind of drops their punishment on a coach, they kind of go with that, but who knows what's going to happen. I, I'm sure if he feels like he's going to get suspended for a season or something, he's going to go to the National Football League. But I also believe... <clears throat> Key, we're giving the, we're giving these owners too much credit. Some of them are absolute idiots, and 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 they're not great at, at well, hiring go, coaches. They're well, absolute well, idiots. I mean, Matt no, that's Patricia, true though, Sean. I'm I'm not, not, you're giving them too much question. No, I'm, I'm I, not. I, I, Matt Patricia got a head coaching job. Joe Judge got a head coaching job. Like let let's let's be what? let's be really serious here. Yeah. Like, no, but, these but, guys got head coaching jobs over the likes of the enemies of the world, true. over the likes of of very true. established. Caldwell doesn't have a job, True. and Matt Patricia has gotten a job. No. So this is, you Brandon know, we, we can talk about these owners and their process. Yeah. And, and, I mean, Brandon Staley got a job. It, it, there's look, been Richard, a number of it, guys. Their process is not the best. That's why I say, <clears throat> who's to say that they, even though they, like you say, I'm not going to necessarily go to the lint that you did by calling them idiots because I don't think they're idiots. I, I, just I think call them idiots not, today, I just don't think at times they're very smart <laughs> and they listen to okay. other people that don't know anything about football. <laughs> That's a nice way to say it. Well, I don't, That's a know, nice I, way to say it. Yeah, I don't want to do them like that. But you are correct to say that they become <laughs> delusional at times and don't understand. That's why I say, who's to say that they like hardball, right? They look at him and go, eh, because he didn't fit what they thought in their interview process, mm -hmm. which then becomes a mistake, yep. which brings up what you just said about some of the hires that you look at Matt Patricia, Mr. Pencil, as, as Skip likes to call Coach him, Pencil, Pencil, yeah. Coach Pencil, <laughs> or you look at Joe Judge. Like, you and I, we would look at them and go, nah, that ain't what we're looking for. <laughs> them, on the other hand, they look at that and go, we just hired the best guy available. Belichick's guy. And, you know, right. or Belichick's guy yeah. or something like that. So and, you, and, you are right. I just, you know. Uh, soft a little bit. I mean, this is going to leave me on a tangent about 
It's going to lead me on a tangent a little bit uh, about how black head coaches got to do so much. I mean, Brandon Staley was the D coordinator for one season he and got a head coaching job somehow, some way. And that was crazy. But Great the black point. coaches, I mean, Eric B. Enemy, we talk about how he interviews. And now this, I can't imagine Joe Judge and Matt Patricia interviewed out of this world. I think Joe Judge was a special teams coach and he went was. from head to head coach. All right, what are we talking about? They moved, and we, we hear they about moved these the other head coaches. Post. They moved the goalposts. Remember, you had to be a coordinator, offense, defense coordinator. Then all of a sudden, it was like, oh, he is a coordinator. He's a special teams coordinator. Mm. So hire him. Mm. Okay. Dan Campbell has done a fantastic job. He was a tight ends coach. But I don't think, I, I don't think Michigan I, – I think Jim's best bet is to stay at Michigan, Skip. I think that's the best thing he could do. Uh, I, don't, I don't even understand why he interviewed with Atlanta. That's one of those ones where I think it would have made more sense for him and made him seem even more exclusive if he said, Atlanta, I appreciate that. No, thanks. Okay. I won't coach this thing. Keyshawn, I agree with Richard on all the above. I'll, I'll go up to 80% that I think Jim stays at Michigan. I hark back to that speech he gave national championship night after they won in which I I won't give it chapter and verse, but he basically said when he dies, he, he just wants one thing on his gravestone. Here lies a Michigan man because it's just in his heart and his soul and he played there, obviously grew up in Ann Arbor for the most part. And he has a chance to create a dynasty. He's got it going in the right direction. I was a little surprised that J.J. McCarthy said I'm going into the draft because he had a year of eligibility left. And I thought maybe he and Jim would try to run it back and go back to back. But did he sign with an agent? Yeah, I, I don't know. If he yet. didn't sign with an agent, it's he could always go. It's, it's highly he could possible. Go back. Okay, all right. The point is that Jim still has it stuck in his craw that Michigan once upon a time, what was it, five years ago, made him take a pay cut because he had a couple of off years. One really through the pandemic, they had a, a tough year. But the point was. He, he's still getting even with them because this would be the third straight offseason that he's interviewed with multiple NFL teams. And I think he's tweaking them. He's trying to kind of stick it back to them. And he's negotiating a big new deal, which could be sort of that, quote, unquote, lifetime contract at Michigan. So all that works in his favor because he's a hot, hot candidate. But to, to me, I'm with Richard because I'm, I'm not sure there's an NFL job that he would trust enough to say, there, I could go win maybe multiple Super Bowls, but it, 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 at Michigan, he, he could win a couple more national championships because they are loaded. And even in their D line, they got a, so th those kids are all coming back. It, it, they're going to be a force no, to they, be reckoned they, they, with. They are, but the reason I feel the way I feel, Skip, is I, I say this about many people across many sports and, and industries. The highest level this is, is, is always where you want to be. Yeah. I understand he took. But it's not like he's never been there. He, he was. Yeah, but he didn't win. It's a, there's, yeah. a different, there's a difference when you win it and when you don't win it. Okay? And, and his brother has one. He does. Whether it was against him or somebody, and he might well, get another well, one. Well, it was at his expense. And he, he might get another he one. He might. That conversation is different yep. at Thanksgiving when you got one versus not having one. Okay. Because coaches, owners, they thrive, the employers, they thrive to win that trophy, that championship. It's, it's one thing to hold it up high. But then when you essentially failed, even though we don't look at it as a failure, but it's a failure because you didn't win it. You want that so bad. That's why these coaches, they, they try to get back in it at the highest level. Even the great Nick Saban tried it and he realized, no, nah, this ain't for me. I got to go back to college. Absolutely. He never got the opportunity to get to a Super Bowl. He failed immediately with the Miami Dolphins. So he said, I'm, I'm going. I'm going back to college. That's what I'm saying. When you, when you look at it, that's why they become lifers. That's mm -hmm. why they're still doing it. Yeah. It's to win the ultimate prize. Is the only reason why I feel like, in the end, if the Chargers are to take him, maybe there's multiple Super Bowls there. Mm -hmm. Atlanta's iffy. Like Richard said, because there's no, they got a couple good skill position pieces, but there's no quarterback in the lousy yep. division. Baker Mayfield just showed you just now that they're getting ready to probably make some things happen out of that division. So it's kind of like you, if you can get a quarterback, maybe Atlanta's a good spot for somebody. But the Chargers is a perfect position for a coach 
that wants to coach in the National Football although League. Although the right ownership now. there has always been a little. That's what I'm shaky. saying. So I don't know if the owners yeah. in them vibe. Yeah. Although he did play for the Chargers. He did at the has, end. At the he, very he, end. he has a relationship based on his playing days with the Chargers in San Diego. In the end, so I'm sure the Suns that were around and they know him. So there's a relationship there to some degree. Yeah. I just my, think he he may my, want to go back to the pros. My my concern is because I think he's going back to Michigan is you're leaving the team very vulnerable. And kids these days are not loyal. They're not, it's a weird time. And coaches, <clears throat> it's that transfer portal time. Coaches are in these kids' ears at Georgia, at Bama, at all these other schools at Ohio State saying, man, you see your head coach interviewing for these jobs? You sure he coming back? Yeah. You might wanna, our head coach is gonna be here. Our head coach is right here. We're going to be competing for a national championship. He's not going anywhere. This head coach is interviewing for jobs every week. So that's the only part where I'm kind of scratching my head that 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 hardball that Jim would would interview for these jobs is because it's it's planting the seed of doubt in the kids' heads that are there. Fair point. And so in the college landscape and the way it is right now where kids transfer every day, where kids are one and done, they one year and then transfer somewhere else and play for six, seven schools, uh, during their careers, do you really want to risk that when you have everything you wanted? You're coming off a national championship. You got a strong team. Do you really want to potentially lose some of your kids because you want to interview for these jobs? Because kids aren't going to sit here and wait around for you to take this job. If they think you're gone, they're gone. But he's been doing that for multiple yes. years. I mean, he, <laughs> if you think about it, he's interviewed for the Broncos, the <clears throat> Minnesota Vikings, the Chicago yeah. Bears. Like he's, he's done this same dance every offseason for the last several years. And he went on and won a national title, and nobody, that, to my memory, left the team. Yeah. All right, let's get right. back to Richard's right. point. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the NCAA because there are two that I know of open investigations of Michigan football program and Jim Harbaugh. Okay, so in my time, I've been in the middle of that SMU death penalty scandal back in the day. Did and, you pay anybody? No, I didn't. They I got some bribes myself, but I didn't take them. But the point was, Ron <laughs> Meyer skipped town, so to speak, one step ahead of the NCAA law and took the New England head coaching job. Then you watched what happened with Pete Carroll at USC, which benefited Richard, obviously, in Seattle because it looked like something was coming down. All of a sudden, Pete is over and out of here, right? And, and he's going up to Seattle, back to the NFL to coach the Seahawks. OK, so now we have another opportunity here where, to Richard's point, it seems like the NCAA has lost some of its juice, you know, whatever it is. They've lost control of their sport because it's the wild, wild west and everybody's in the transfer portal and there's no loyalty and there are no contracts and kids can just come and go. So the point is, I don't know how big a hammer they can drop, but if Jim gets the scent of this, he, he gets the, the message that they're going to drop a big hammer and next year they can't go to a bowl game, then maybe that would encourage him to take an NFL job. Yeah, one, one year of some sanctions and a couple of scholarships yeah. and whatnot and a down year, okay, that's fine. That's why he wants to protect himself. He doesn't want the university, like you said, Skip, several years ago that took money from him. He doesn't want that again. He doesn't want to be faced with, okay, I'm going to stay loyal to y'all, yep. but yet and still, y'all coming at me and telling me I'm going to be suspended and you don't want to pay me and my family, or you're going to fire me exactly. because yep. the NC2A wants to make an example out of Michigan's football program and me, so they're going to hand the hammer down us to an ump degree, and now y'all yep. take my contract and basically void it out. That's I applaud him mm -hmm. for standing strong and making sure at the end of the day hey, I'm going to flirt with these other NFL teams while y'all get y'all act together if y'all really want to retain me. Okay, so to sum it up. Right, I agree. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, so Keyshawn says Chargers, Richard and I say Michigan, right? Yeah, okay. same colors almost. Yep. One's yep. light blue, dark blue, a lot blue, lighter gold. Yeah. Yeah. Go blue. All right, up next, we need to talk some Belichick. We opened the show talking about him. Now, supposedly, reportedly, he wants a talented, underachieving team. Sounds like he's chasing Tom Brady in that regard. We'll talk about it next. No mercy, no mercy, no mercy.
Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.